Good evening everybody, it is Charlie and welcome back to another video on the Chatting Leeds YouTube channel. Hope everyone's having a great week so far. We're halfway through the week, another day closer to a Leeds United game. Obviously we are taking on Nottingham Forest on Sunday, but I thought I'd just jump on. Obviously it's 1st February, um, the January transfer window ended last night and it was a really good one from Leeds United. Um, first one in my lifetime anyway. Um, but just before we get into it, before we review the transfer window in its entirety, let's get all the formalities out of the way, shall we? Please smash that like button if you enjoy the video. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. It's free. It really helps me out. We're so close to hitting 2K now. We're less than 100 away. So please do me a solid and subscribe if you're new and share all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Right then, January 2023 transfer window review for Leeds United. As I said, in the intro there it was very it was very good um really pleasantly surprised um i must admit i i didn't think we would drop the ball like we did last january where we didn't bring anyone in i remember last deadline day well i was actually away um for a few days with the missus for last deadline day and i remember i kept checking my phone no deals came through. We didn't sign anyone last summer. They gambled with our Premier League status last season, and I think they were rightly called out for it with the board. But you've got to, you've you've just got to applaud them for what they've done in this January transfer window. I think we've addressed areas that we needed to one hundred percent, and for me, Jesse Marsh has no excuses now. Yes, the defence could be a lot better, but it's about how he can coach them um, to perform a lot better in this league moving forward. Um, the attacking options that we've got now are an absolute joke. Like We've got an abundance of talent going forward. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's no excuses now for me. Um, <clears throat> but let's just get into the first signing of the January transfer window. Maximilian Verber signed from RB Salzburg for around eleven million pounds. <coughs> Sorry, guys, really bad throat at the minute, as I always do. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, M Max Verber, RB Salzburg, eleven million quid. We thought he was going to be the answer at left back, um, so that Pascal Strauch could move over to left centre back. But what's materialised since that is that we actually know now that he is probably our best defender um, and he needs to be playing in, in centre-back. I think he can play right or left. He'll probably have to play right centre-back on Sunday against Forrest with Robin Cock being suspended. But nine times out of ten, I think when Cock is back, it will be him on the left centre-back with Pascal Strauch probably playing left-back. Obviously, Firpo has been playing well of late. Um, but I, I still think in the Premier League, he will prefer to play Pascal. But that's the um, a topic for another video. We're just going to talk about the signings, aren't we? So, Max Ferber has played probably a handful of games so far since joining Leeds. Um, came on against Cardiff in CDM, and I thought he was probably the best player on the pitch whilst he was on the pitch. Um, obviously, came on for a little bit against Aston Villa away as well. Um, he's played against Cardiff at home and Brentford at home as well, I believe. Yeah, um, and obviously Accrington Stanley the other day as well. I think every game he's played, he looks like a leader at the back. You can see him dictating to others around him. Very cool, very calm under pressure. Um, thought he pocketed Ivan Tony perfectly in that Brentford game. Um, and what I'm hoping now is obviously in that Brentford game, Cock played better, Ayling even played better, Pascal played better. So I'm hoping that he'll just make others around him play a lot better as well. Um, I think it was a really good signing. Obviously someone that Jesse Marsh knows well. This for me is why I think they'll back Marsh for as long as they can because they've backed him more than any other manager that I've ever known. Um, and like I said the results need to come now um, but yeah Max Verber great start to the window 
um, first signing through the door. Then it was Jorginho Rute from Hoffenheim, um, French forward. Um, club record fee, £35 million. Pound. Um, can play up front or out wide. And look, it's Accrington Stanley. I get that. But he did look like a serious baller in that game. You could just tell his quality every time he got the ball. He was always wanting to move forward, wanting to be direct. He was looking for Bamford all of the time, which is good in my eyes because I'm thinking, right, he, he can link up well with others as well. Um, <clears throat> I think the clips and everything that I'd obviously seen and heard of him on YouTube, Twitter, etc., made me very excited. And I was very intrigued when I knew that he was starting the game against Accrington. I kept my eye on him. It was a bit shaky at the start. As I predicted it would be, it's his first game, but he grew into the game so well. Um, really, really exciting talent. Um, and I, I do think my ideal front three, when everyone is fit, would probably be Sinister on the left, Ruter on the right and Rodrigo up front or Bamford I think either one of the two obviously but it would be Rutter and Sinister on either side in my opinion I, I, I just think that would be so good to see um, but anyway Ruter, club record fee I thought was really good against Akron and Stanley I think it can offer us a lot going forward and like I said, he just adds to the abundance of talent that we've got going forward now. Rodrigo, Bamford, Sinistera, Harrison, Nonto, Aronson, Ruta, Somerville. You know, all them players are all really good and in good, decent form as well. Maybe minus Sinistera, obviously, because of his injury and Ruta, but I think they can grow back into it. And my... I could have said my front three against Forest. I have heard today from LUFC Van Zone on Twitter, like I'm sure a lot of you have, that Rodrigo could be out for the next six weeks after getting an ankle injury against Accrington. So if that's true, my front three on Sunday would be Ruta, Bamford and Sinistera. And if it's and if that's our front three, I think we win the game. Spoiler alert. Um Then we go into obviously the day before deadline day. Weston McKenney from Juventus. Now there was a time where I didn't think this deal would get done. It started off as a permanent transfer, um, thirty-three million pound. We thought, right, fair enough. It's January. Juve are going through a bit of a crisis. They'll want some money. I was, I would have been content with them paying that for Weston McKenney. I think he's an unbelievable talent, good American footballer, um, played at Schalke back when Schalke were decent, and then Juventus, which, you know, unbelievable Italian side. And he was playing regularly for them as well, he scored goals for them in midfield. <coughs> so I was really excited, obviously he knows Aronson, knows Tyler Adams, Jesse Marsh. So yeah, it, it made sense. Obviously it did kind of stall a little bit towards the end of last week. Um, because it kind of changed, didn't it? That um, that it would turn into a loan initially, with then an option to buy, which is ultimately what's happened. Allegri has spoken about it in a press conference and said that um, he did want to leave for Leeds, which indicates to me that we will be signing him at the end of the season, albeit we stay up, which I think we will. I, I it may be wishful thinking. This could be a topic for another video of it, but. But very briefly, I do feel we'll slowly but surely push away from the bottom half. Now, I think we'll stay in the bottom half, sorry, but I think we'll move further away from the relegation zone in terms of points anyway. Um, yeah, and I think that does start against Nottingham Forest on Sunday. But yeah, I think the the free in midfield for me now would be Mark Rocker, Adams and Weston McKennis kind of sitting at the tip of that, allowing him to go box to box as he said in that interview, that is his ideal scenario where he can be box to box, he can attack, he can defend, can chip in with goals and assists. That's what we want from him and is a definite upgrade on Matthias Click. He is. And that leads us nicely 
um, into the outgoings at Leeds um, during this window. Obviously, we'll start with Matthias Click, who um, left um, early um, for DC United in the MLS. Um, links up with Wayne Rooney over there. And look, I, I, I do think it was the right time for Clicky to leave. There'll be people in the comments of this video, there'll be people watching Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, that will have wanted Matthias Click to stay. And I can understand that. But I think you're thinking sentimentally there. You're not thinking logically, in my opinion. Um, I, I think Clicky. The fact that he hadn't started a game all season other than the cup games that he'd played in just showed you that he he was not a major part of Jesse Marsh's plans. I think he was always going to be a sub-option. And he had some good performances off the bench this season, but he's not the player of that first and second Bielsa season, even the first season in the Prem. He's just not that player anymore. He's older now and it'll be a decent payday for him in America and you know he can live in in DC and you know he can live up the American lifestyle and Clicky leaves with so many <laughs> unbelievable memories unbelievable goals performances Clickhousery unbelievable and he will be missed but it was the right time for him to move on, in my opinion. Now, let's just speak about an outgoing <laughs> that it sounds really harsh, but when this broke, the day before deadline day on Monday, I thought Christmas had come round quick. Um, Fabrizio Romano shared that Diego Llorente was on his way to Roma on loan with an obligation for them to buy him for 18 million euros now that contract extension makes so much sense now so much sense because when he got that new deal me and a lot of other Leeds fans were thinking what the hell is going on here what has he done to warrant himself a new deal and I get all these people that said look the the first Premier League season, he was integral to that second part of that season. And he was. I hold my hands up, he was. But what's he done since then? To be fair, it's, he did score three goals last season that I can think of anyway. Against Watford at home, Villa away in, in, in the three-all. And he scored at the Emirates, didn't he, when they beat us 2-1. So, you know, he did actually score three goals, but... The performances just weren't good enough and they want this season as well. Like Bambi on ice. You know, and I, I, I just don't think he's ever truly adapted to the Premier League um, and how fast pace it is. The fact that Jose Mourinho has identified him and signed off on this deal is baffling to me. He'll have the shock of his life when he watches him play. But on the other side of that coin, you could argue that the Italian league is a slower paced league. He'll have more time on the ball. He'll be able to play his own game a bit better. And by all means, and I'm not just saying this because I don't want him back because I do not I do not want to see him in a lead shirt ever again. But I, actually, I do hope he rips it up in Serie A. I wish him all the best for the future, as I do with any Leeds player that leaves. But... It again, it, similar to quickly in a way, but not obviously. But I feel like it was right for Llorente to move on. Diogo Montero has come in, who I'll just briefly speak about. I don't know a lot about him. Obviously, eighteen years old, he's captained Portugal under seventeens, under eighteens, whatever. Um, <clears throat> again, from the clips that I've seen of him, and I've seen a lot of people say this, and it's right. It does remind me of Ben White a little bit. Looks like an absolute beast, but he's probably not going to come into the first team fold too much. But Urente wasn't really in the first team fold, so it is a like for like replacement, really. Um, you know, Urente has gone from working with Marsh to Mourinho, from playing with Sam Greenwood to Paolo Dybala. Like, I don't know how he's blagged this move. But fair play to him. Um, and like I said, I wish him nothing but best um, 
for the future. Um, and that, for me, tipped why it's been a really good window for Leeds. But I just want to speak about Jack Harrison as well. Now, just before I started recording this video, I go on Twitter. And there's an interesting story released from The Athletic uh, about Jack Harrison and what happened with him on deadline day. We all thought that he'd rejected a move to Leicester um, and that Leeds were obviously happy to keep him and that there were talks to sign him down to a new deal. Now, I highly doubt that's going to happen now or if it does, I think he'll stall and stall and stall because it turns out that Jack Harrison actually travelled to Leicester yesterday. Um, he had a medical booked. He was in Leicester. He was ready to sign for them. They offered him a five and a half year deal, wage increase, and then Leeds United changed their minds at the last second. We did a we did a Dan James with Swansea on Jack Harrison and Leicester yesterday. Now, the goal against Accrington, he didn't celebrate. Now, at the time, I was thinking, some, I've noticed with Jack, sometimes when he scores, he doesn't really celebrate that much. So I didn't really read too much into that. But now this has happened. The fact that they were going to let him move in the first place means that he can't be a massive part of Jesse Marsh's plans. Even though, in my opinion, I think a lot of people will agree, in that, in that central attacking space, I think he's been better than Brendan Aronson. But I kind of think Weston McKenney is going to operate as not a number 10, but like I said, he's, he's box to box. So he'll help with the attack in the central space and he'll he'll help with the defending. And I do think the 4 3 3 will be implemented. So if that's the case, Harrison for me doesn't get into our best start in 11. Because my best start in 11 with the players we've got now based on current performances and form, is probably Amelie in goal, Aileen at right-back, Koch, Verber, Pascal, Adams and Rocker, Weston McKenney in front of them, and then the front three of Ruta, Rodrigo and Sinistera. People might say, what about Nonto? Yes, he's been unbelievable, so has Somerville. But I think they're great bench options. I think Sinistera and Ruta have got too much quality, in my opinion. That could change, by all means. But at this moment in time, that is my ideal eleven. Jack Harrison's not in it. Might be in a few people's, but I bet a lot of people would not have Jack Harrison in their starting eleven. So it's interesting to see how Marsh kind of treats him now. It's interesting to see if... When he does play, how he plays, if his mood seems a bit off, you can tell with body language, can't you? Is he just going to run down his contract until um, summer and leave on a free? Or is he going to sign a new deal? If you're asking me right now, I don't think he will sign a new deal. But that could change if Leicester is still interested in the summer. If Newcastle maybe come back in. But I didn't realise how high in demand Jack Harrison actually is because he is quite hot and cold for Leeds, isn't he? But who knows, in the right system, under the right coach, he could flourish. And again, if Harrison had have left, I'd have been gutted about it because I do like Harrison, but at the same time, I would have understood it. And I can understand why they maybe thought about it. They probably panicked and thought, we can't get any replacements in, so that's why they changed their mind. If we'd have got Zaniolo, I think he'd have gone. But, yeah, it's just something to think about, isn't it, like, with, with Harrison. Are we going to sign him down to a new deal, or is he going to leave? Who knows, we'll soon find out, won't we? If I was to give this January transfer window a rating out of 10, I would I will give it a strong 8, 8 out of 10. Reason for that is, I think, if we'd have had a bit more time, I would have probably got another defensive player in. I know we've got Montero, but, I mean, one to come straight in, or at least challenge. Um... But yeah, strong 8 out of 10. We've enforced in a lot of the places now that we need to. Marsh has got all the tools to do a job. He needs to deliver results now. If we get beat by Nottingham Forest on Sunday, you'll just the fan base is just going to be so split again. Because I, I could probably argue now that 
I mean, might might feel a bit differently on Sunday if we do get beat, but I could argue that he probably needs a bit of time now because he, he's got everything now, in my opinion, minus minus a better defence. But I, I do think the defence is capable, if coached correctly, to be good. At least to get us through this season and then we can sort it out again in summer. No excuses now for me. Needs to deliver results. If he doesn't, then we'll see what happens with him, won't we? But like I said, 8 out of 10. Hit me up in the comment section down below, guys, on everything that I've discussed there. And give me your rating out of 10 of Leeds United's January transfer window. Please smash a like if you've enjoyed this video. And please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Really close to hitting 2K now, guys. It's my next goal on the channel if you could do me a solid and help me out with that that'd be great and i'll see you next on friday for my predicted 11 ahead of the nottingham forest game i'll see you then cheers